This is how to check the fluid level on the Duologic gearbox. It has a little reservoir and the fluid level, if it's at the wrong level, too low, simply can sometimes cause issues about the gearbox as it becomes erratic. So what you do is you take the, the battery would normally be here. I've already taken that out. And then you take out the uh, tray. There's a bolt holds that down. You take the whole tray out. And once you've got the tray out, we'll show you next. You need to take this metal protective cover out. This metal protective cover comes out the bottom, actually. I'm showing it from the top here. But it's held on by four bolts. There are two that side. And there are two that side. So that will sit down at the front behind the radiator. And that keeps the all the muck off the, uh, the front of the Seller Speed Duologic unit. Now we're under the vehicle, you can see this is the reservoir here. It says seller speed on the, on the side. That's the reservoir that's been exposed by taking that metal cover off. And if you look up at the top, right up at the top, there's a min max, there's the min max mark. And you can actually see I'm a little bit over the max. So when this was last changed a good few years ago, maybe a little bit was put, too much was put in. And this has to be checked when the there's no pressure in the system. So I've left the vehicle overnight. I've made sure I haven't opened the driver's door because when you open the driver's door, it pressurizes the system. So I've popped the bonnet, taken the um, battery out, taken the cover off and I can check and I'm just gonna leave it because it's working. So at least I know it's right. If it did need topping up, then you loosen that, take that off and then you fill the required amount of fluid in there. The sockets you'll need, you'll need a 13 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. This is where the four bolts go for to hold the cover back on. There's one there, there's one there, and on the other side, you can see there's one there, and then there's one right up there as well. So four bolts hold the protective cover in place. So to remove this, their in, their intake, wiggle it and get it out, and then it comes out from here. And that's it removed. It's quite a, you've got to sort of bend it and wiggle it, but it, that will come out. Now that's given me loads more space here. You can clearly see down here to the top of the, uh, the reservoir. So now I reckon if I push that out the way, I'll be able to get that uh, protective cover back in. Okay, so to get this shroud back in, it's probably the fiddliest bit. I tried it from the bottom by pushing it up. It sort of couldn't do it. So then I tried it from the top. I took the air intake out of here and uh, I tried it from the top, but I couldn't do that either. So then I tried it from the bottom while, while I'm under the car and then I've jammed it in position and then I've come around and I'm looking at it from the top now. And now once it's in the top, I can get it into position. And that is what it looks like. I haven't tightened it up yet, but it's now sitting in the correct position. You can see I've loosely put the bolts in. There's the one at the top there. And the, uh, there's the other one there. That was the one that was more corroded, the head of this bottom one on that side of the shroud. And you can see that there's a bolt there. I'm gonna tighten up now. And there's one up there as well. This is a little ratchet tool I'm using with the 10 millimeter socket. So for the one side, you don't need the extension piece, but on the um, other side, you will need the little extension bar. Now I'm gonna put the battery tray back in. It's held in by three bolts. There's one at the back and two at the front, obviously left and right. So one bolt goes in there, one bolt goes in there, one bolt goes in there. And then we will just clip up the various uh, cables around the side. Actually, it's worth checking when you get this out, whether the tray is quite rusty. If it is, give it a good wire brush down and give it a coat of hammerite paint. Make sure you tuck these cables nicely into these clips. And there'll be one at the back as well in that corner. And then you just tighten it all up. Okay, I've put the tray in, tightened up with three bolts. Put the little uh, plastic tray in. There's a little drain pipe on it as well. I'm going to connect this up now. Make sure you always do, easy to forget, is connect the retaining strap 
down to that uh, down to there. If you don't have that strap properly, that's an MOT failure. When you're finished, this is obviously the quick release. So this is pretty obvious. That snaps shut. You can't really make it tight. Make sure this is uh, adequately tight. The last thing you want is that to be loose on the post. Just check that you've tightened up there so the strap's done. That battery's in place. That's the um, air intake piece I had to put back in because I took that out when I was trying to get there. There's the shroud. You can now see that's in place. Everything's tight. And we can now uh, pop the bonnet, drop the bonnet, sorry. And away we go. The fluid they recommend if you need to top it up is a specific transmission fluid with ATF Dextron 3 type additives. The Tutela version is called Tutela Car CS Speed. And that specifically says that's for the 7-speed transmission.